Shalom, my name is Elisheva from Family of Messiah, and I want to talk a moment about Shavuot and the giving of the commandments. Yesterday we observed Shavuot, the festival of weeks, and we remembered how Yahuwah gave the Torah on Mount Sinai, and we accepted the Torah upon ourselves once again. And I want to talk a minute about that experience of Shavuot, the first Shavuot on Mount Sinai. Now, when I was in Christianity, it wasn't an event that was talked about a whole lot. I learned about it through Bible stories and Sunday school and children's church, but I didn't hear a whole lot of teachings on it. Maybe it was just the churches that I was affiliated with, I'm not sure, but it wasn't a whole lot spoken about it. Um, it was kind of overlooked in a sense. To be such a great event, it was often overlooked. So. I want to explain a little bit. You know, if you go back in the scriptures and you read Exodus Shemot 19, right before the giving of the Ten Commandments, that is an amazing event that happened. And you can't overlook it. You can't just pass over it and act like nothing happened. It is the greatest event in the history of mankind. And you hear what I'm telling you? The greatest event in the history of mankind. We can't just pass over and gloss over it. It is the one greatest thing that every human being on the earth has to know about and recognize for the greatness that it is. Okay? And you read Exodus Shemot 19 and you see what happened. The Almighty Himself descended on the mountain to talk with His people. You get that? The Almighty Himself, not a messenger, not a prophet, not an angel, no one in His place. He himself, the almighty Yahuwah himself, the most high creator of the universe, came down to earth, descended from the heavens to come to earth and speak to his people. And you read that chapter and you see what's going on. There was, there was thunder and there was lightning and the ground was shaking. The shofar was sounding louder and louder and louder. And the people, it, it says that the people saw the sounds and heard the sights. And I don't know if that was literal or it was just, there was just so much kedusha, so much set apartness, so much spirituality that was happening at that moment that their physical senses were literally overwhelmed and they couldn't take it. It was so much going on. Thunder and lightning and, 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 and smoke and fire. He said it descended in fire on the cloud and the mountain looked like it was a flame. There was thick clouds and the smoke going up was like a furnace. You understand? Picture that. Picture yourself being there and seeing this mountain on fire and lightnings and thunders and sound of a shofar coming out of nowhere. Do you see the picture here? The greatest event ever, the Almighty Himself came down and spoke to His people, and three million people heard it. That's about how many people came out of Egypt. About three million people at the foot of that mountain heard the voice of the Almighty for themselves. Three million people witnessed and experienced the greatest event in the history of mankind. Do you get that? Three million people saw Him descend and heard His voice for themselves. And what did he say? He gave his commandments. He started with the ten. And you know the story after the first two, they were just so overwhelmed with the, the set apartness that was emanating from him and from his voice that the people couldn't take it. And they said, Moshe, no, you go up and you hear and you give us the rest. But those first two commandments, the people themselves heard his voice. He gave his commandments on Mount Sinai. And it says in later chapters that he carved tablets of stone and he wrote with his own finger, his Torah, his mitzvah, his commandments, and he gave it to his people. The Almighty himself descended from heaven, came to the earth to speak directly to his people and hand deliver his Torah. Now, how important do you think that Torah is? How important do you think his law is if he himself came down and gave it directly to his people? He spoke directly to them. Three million people heard it and he carved it with his own finger. It's important. You understand what I'm saying? And many of us, despite the fact that that was the greatest event in history, many of us listen to a man who came years later, some guy named Paul, riding on a donkey on his way to Damascus, and he had a vision, so he claims, 
right? He had a vision and saw Jesus who told him, why are you persecuting me? Why, it's hard for you to kick against the goads. And that's it. That's all he said. Why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick against the goads. And I mention that because all of Christianity's teachings or the, the bulk of the doctrines and teachings of Christianity is based on Paul's teachings. And he's the one who says that we no longer have to obey the Torah, right? He's the one that says the laws are no longer valid. We're under grace and truth, right? Or however those verses state, basically saying what Yah said on that mountain from his own mouth is no longer valid. Who are we going to listen to? We're going to listen to the Almighty himself who came down and spoke for three million people to witness and hear, or are we going to listen to one man who claimed he had a vision and a small group of people traveling with him said they heard? They didn't see, but they said they heard. And what is the message? Why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick against the goats. What does that have to do with us? Yah gave his commandments telling all people in the world how to live, what he expects from us, how to relate to him and how to treat one another. Why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick against the goats. And we're going to listen to this guy who then tells us that we don't have to do what the Almighty said from his very own mouth and wrote with his very own finger. In what world does that make sense? In what world do we listen to some guy whose vision has nothing to do with what the Almighty said, but we're going to listen to him instead of the Almighty himself? Just use common sense for a moment. Forget all the, the indoctrinations we had since we were a child. Just common sense. You can, you can ask a child. Ask a child, will you listen to the Almighty who says this is what we're supposed to do? Or are we going to listen to some guy who had a totally different message, but then later says, don't worry about what the Almighty said. A kid can tell you better than that. But that's what billions of people around the world do. That's what I used to do. I used to listen to Paul. But now I know the truth. And yesterday, we observed Shavuot, and we accepted the Torah once again. Because on that day, it didn't just happen at Sinai, it happens continually. Every year on Shavuot, Yahuwah extends his Torah once again, and whoever is willing accepts it. And even if you didn't observe Shavuot, even if it, you're watching this video, who knows when, you can still have your own Shavuot experience because in the Torah, there is no specific date given for Shavuot. It's simply 50 days after Pesach, after the first day of Festival of Unleavened Bread. So you come out of Egypt and then there's a process of growth and then you receive the Torah. That can happen anytime. At any point in time, you can realize that what I'm believing, whatever belief system I'm in, is not Yah's way. And then you come out of that belief system, whatever it is. And then you do some research on your own and you start thinking about things, and you start seeking the Almighty, and you start to grow a little bit, and then you can make that decision. His Torah is truth, and I'm going to accept it. That can happen any day of the year. No matter when you're watching this, you can still accept the Torah. Accept the words of the Almighty himself. He came down from heaven to earth to speak to us directly. We have to hear it and we have to accept it. It's his words, direct from his mouth, written with his own finger. Who else should we listen to? We shouldn't listen to anyone else. Listen to the Almighty. Read Exodus 19 and 20 and let that begin your journey in, in studying and learning the Torah. And you will see that you will have your own Shavuot experience. And when we listen to the Almighty, there's nothing greater than that. Listen to his words. He himself came to speak to us. He himself came down in a mountain of smoke and fire, thunder and lightnings, and he spoke directly to his people, his words, his voice, and he wrote it down with his own fingers. Listen to him and him only. Chag Sameach. Happy Shavuot.